G'day students, welcome back to the YouTube School of Gold Recovery. For today's class we have Gold Corner BGAs. We'll get started very soon, so grab your books and sharpen your pencils and we'll get stuck into it. Okay, for, the, for those of you who aren't sure what a BGA is, or the difference between a BGA and an IC chip. IC chips have legs on them, they have the steel pins that come out the side and BGAs don't. So if you look at these here, these are RAM BGAs and there's the little silver, not silver, but the, the solder balls underneath them where they were soldered onto the, the motherboards or the RAM sticks. Um, so there's no pins. If you look at it from the top, there's no pins coming out. All right. They're different to these because these are stuck on this little bit of board that's at the background of it. There's the fire, uh, solder balls there. But the ceramic part on top, as you can see here clearly on this one, the ceramic part is stuck onto this fiber. We want to take that off. You don't want this part. This gets treated separately. All we want for this video is the ceramic on top. Okay, the black ceramic part. There's several different sizes, as you can see here. And the statistics say that a gold corner BGA has up to 10 grams of gold per kilo. Now, that obviously um, depends on a few things. You've got the age. Like anything, older computer stuff has more. The make, some makers, some manufacturers are a bit more frugal and put less in them. Uh, the size, obviously the bigger ones are most likely going to have more gold than the small ones. And then you've got things like this. This disc on top is actually copper. And after taking the fibre away from the ceramic, I've tried breaking it in half to separate the copper before roasting them and it's just too hard so I process them all the same pick the copper out later so we might not get 10 grams of gold per kilo simply because they're not all big and they're not all the same make and they're not all old and all these other things okay so you might be tempted to keep large ones like this that are soldered onto motherboards even this one's a little bit smaller but it's still a decent size but don't don't throw these in with gold corner bgas because gold corner bgas once they're separated from the fiber board don't have any solder on them if you go putting these with solder on them into the mix of these you're going to introduce tin and tin is a nightmare when you come to refining gold so these have to be soaked in hydrochloric acid first these are generally most of these are ram bga and just some normal flat pack bgas these are all gold corner bgas that i've taken away from the fiber there's all the fiber boards I've taken off. Now, when you take the fiber boards off, some of them come off clean and some don't. But the main thing is taking the fiber off, whether it's clean off or not. If there's bits of, uh, see if I can find one here, bits of cardboard stuck on the back of this, or cardboard or fiber, or whatever you want to call it. If there's still, like this one here, Okay, a lot of it's still stuck on there. That's okay. The main fibre part has gone, and so has the tin underneath. All right? Now, you see all this here, and you think, geez, look at all that gold there. There must be a lot of gold in this. Surprisingly, there is very little gold in these parts. So much so that I'm not even going to make a video on it. It's not worth chasing. And you might look at me and go, yeah, right, look at it all. But I can assure you there's very little gold in these, we'll call it, let's call them uh, gold corner bottoms and the fibres of the tops, alright? These here 
the best way and the most efficient way to process these, I'm just going to throw them straight in my, in my AP. It's only the surface gold that you can see. There's no gold inside the board. It's only what you can see on here in the little gold corner. There's not much at all. However, the ceramic is chock-a-block full of gold. You can't see it because it's inside, but there is a lot of gold in these. So you have to separate them, put the fibers aside, throw those in your, B, in your AP. It's not worth putting them in nitric because you're just going to use expensive nitric for very little return. Just stick them in your AP and forget about them. Alrighty, now I'll be back in a minute to show you how to, the best way to separate the fibre. There's lots of videos on these and everyone's got their way of doing it. I'm not saying mine's any better than anyone else's, but what I found works best for me. And I'll just tell you how I do it. You may find a better way for yourself. But I'll go and get me wire cl clippers. You can use a pair of long nose pliers if you like. I, I personally use wire clippers. So I'll go and get them and I'll show you what I do. Okay, so the easiest way i found, you don't put the whole thing on because you up here is going to cut more than down there. I just put the tip of the um, cutters on there and I, I do this motion, right? not that motion. That, if you do that, you're going to break the board. If you do that, it pries it off the, off the ceramic. And you don't do it very hard, just a little bit, just get it started on each corner you can hear it coming and if the ceramic happens to crack you want to make sure you get the crack parts off as well because that's where the gold is sometimes they crack especially these big ones and then you can go a bit further up once you've got it started to free it in the middle but just concentrate on that see this is all cracked on the corner so we'll get that in a minute these big ones are a little bit fussy so now that it's starting to crack loose you can pry it off. Like that. And then let's get this um, part that's stuck on there. Let's come off. Let's come off. Trust me to put a hard one aside. Well, it's good that you can see sometimes they're not so easy to do. I've done about 10 of these big ones tonight, no dramas at all. And naturally, the one I've got to show you gives me grief. You want to get all this ceramic off like that. Put that in that bucket, that goes aside. So this one should hopefully be a bit easier. So only about halfway up the, up the cutters. If you want to use long nose pliers, that's fine. And you just bend it down a little bit. Don't go too far and you end up cutting the board. And then you can go a bit further up and really, really give it a bit more like that. And off it comes. So that goes here, that goes in the bucket. The smaller they get, the, generally, the easier they get. If you do happen to cut the board, it doesn't matter too much, just uh, see what you can do. Maybe get a sharp knife or something and pry it off. See, that looks good, but it's really not that much in it. And these little ones are generally pretty easy. I'm have to go around a couple of times just to make sure you can get it off like that. And this is that easy. Okay, I'm going to try and give you guys a, a weight to start with, but my kitchen scales are broke, so all I can use is my gold precision scales. Um, I'm a, I've got the base of this sitting on the pad, so hopefully it's going to be okay. Uh, I've got the bowl teared off to zero, and these only go up to 200 gram, so I'm going to have to do this in increments. I'm, I don't know how many hundreds of grams I've got, so we'll see.
at the moment we're up to 119, 156, 170, ooh, 189, 196, 197, not too much, take one off. Okay, so that's close enough to 200 grams. Still is it teared? Yep. Make sure that's in the middle. Still teared. Okay. And we've got 65. Okay. So there's another 200 grams. Okay, so as you wouldn't believe it, my phone died. My girlfriend's got her phone going now. And this last little bit. Let's see what's in here. What does that say? I can't see from here. 57. 57, right. So we've got 457 grams. You can almost say that's 500 grams which is half a kilo. 450 grams is actually two pound. Because, yeah, 450, 451 or something like that is two pound. So I'm going to say half a kilo. So close to half a, half a kilo is not funny. What's it? It's only about three or four BGAs. All right, so let's, let's start with that. Start with two pound, half a kilo. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. My head's not with it tonight. It's been a long day. Uh, 450 grams is one pound, not two. Half a kilo is one pound. Okay, so I've got a new tin. So the one that was falling apart. So I'm going to put my BGAs in there. I would pour them in, but my luck, they'll all fall in the ashes. Um... I don't have a whole lot, so I think I should be right to just put them all in. If I had a lot more, I would do small amounts so that I know that they're all going to get um, oxidised. Because I found once before, when doing a large amount, that the bottom didn't burn white like the top did. But that's, that's fine, there's not much at the bottom, so... That, that's good so I'll get the fire happening and I'll roast those and uh, I might you make use of the fire while it's going when these are done and I'll put some other things in for another video I got the lid on just to stop ash from going in there until this burns down to just coals the reason I don't use my uh, homemade furnace um, forge, whatever you want to call it, is uh, because I've got no charcoal clumps left. So you know, I'm just back to the old tin in the fire business. Um, I hope you're paying attention at the back of the class, mucking around. There'll be a spot quiz at the end of this. Alright, so I'll let this burn down. I'll put some more wood on, just keep it nice and hot. Shouldn't take very long. I see, it was a good thing I had the lid on. And all the ash that landed on top of it. I would have hated to have extra ash in there. I've got enough to deal with that's going to be in there. You can see they're roasting nicely. They're going nice and white. They're all nicely roasted. Some of them may look dark. But that's because they had the... See, that's the copper, the copper plate that was on top. So there'd be some of them that may be black because the plate was on them. There's another copper plate. So these were what were stuck on some of them. See that one's all broke up. There's another copper plate. So I've got a fish through them. There's another one here. And another one here. So I've got a fish through them, pull out all the copper. 
and uh, there's another one and these will break up quite nicely there's another one so that'll go through the blender really well and now I'm using the fire for another video so I'll do those tomorrow it's too late now alright so what I've done is I've gone through this and crushed it like that every one of them making sure I get every single one of them broke and um, what happens is when you try and snap it in half you'll know straight away if there's a piece of copper on it this is all the copper I've got it looks like every single one of them had copper even if you can't actually see the copper or well, some of those might be steel I don't, I don't know what this is it might be just contin plated copper or something I don't know but um yeah, there's so many more here than I thought there would be. It's like every one of them must have had it, even if you couldn't see it. So, by pressing it and trying to break them out, you'll know straight away if there's a piece of copper on there or not. And I'm pretty sure now that I've got them all. Uh, each one of them, let's see if I can find a more clear one, has got all these holes around the outside. Some of them are a bit different. This is not so long. They're smaller and gaps in them. And you've got to really bend them and backwards and forwards because bits of chips like to hide in that hole but each time i got one i had to really make sure that it's all free and i had to make sure that i got all the small ones too there's a lot of small ones amongst it so even a little piece that you think might already be a big one broken i just tested it by breaking it in half again the only thing that's in there now apart from the chips are these little bits of circuit die and that's okay they're not going to consume any acid so I don't care, they can leave those in there in case there's any gold stuck to them. Um, but the idea of taking the copper out first is that that's not going to consume any acid. Otherwise, if I'd left all that copper in there, that would take up so much of my nitric acid. Not only that, but these can be used now to put in my stock pot to help drop gold from my stock pot. Which is something everyone must have, by the way. There's a lot of new people I've been talking to who are starting out and i don't know if they realize that you have to have a stock pot before you start mucking around with any chemicals anyway so now i'm going to put these in the blender and really chop it up fine and i'm going to brush my fingers off with a brush into here in case there's any gold residue on my fingers i doubt there would be but i don't want to lose any um there's a lot of people who like to ask me questions and that's great Please ask me as well, any questions you want. I'm here to help if I can. Uh, however, it's easier for some people, if you want to, to contact me on Facebook rather than leaving a message on YouTube. I'm not fussed either way. If you want to leave a message on Facebook or you want to leave a message on YouTube, it doesn't bother me. But to get a quicker response, if you if you message me on Facebook, I'd no doubt get the ding on the, on the messenger and, and know that I've got a message. So... This is my site, Gold Recovery and Refining with Pete. If you go to that, and you can see up here, it says send me a message. Okay? So for anybody who wants to message me and get an answer sooner than waiting for me to go into YouTube, that's where you, a good place to go. I welcome any questions. I'll try and help anyone I can. So... Anyway, enough about that. Um, also, I've had quite a few people subscribe lately, and that means the world to me. I can't thank you all enough for those who have subscribed so far. And if you haven't subscribed already, please, please, please do. I really need more subscribers. Okay, so I'll get this ready and put it in the blender, and I'll come back then. Now, because I don't have many uh, or much Gold Corner BGAs, this is all... Uh, all there is, so I've managed to get it in one load in the blender. So I'm going to blend this up. And even though I don't have any steel legs or anything in there like I seized would have, I still want to uh, sieve it because I want to make sure that everything is in small enough pieces. Um, there will be the circuit die things in there. Um, they're going to get smashed up as well, and they'll probably be stuck in the sieve. But I want to make sure that all the actual chips themselves are broke, so I will sieve it. But everything will end up going together, and then I'll wash the ash away. So I'll give this a whiz now. If 
I can get it to turn on. So I won't show the whole thing because I'm sure this is going to be boring. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to blend it all up, sieve it, blend it some more, sieve it, blend it some more, sieve it. I'll cut to that. So you can see that even after blending it, there's a lot of pieces that are still not broke up. Apart from the little circuit dies, there's also lots and lots of chips there that are not broken. So I'm going to have to keep doing this until it's all powder, or as much as I can. Okay, I've blended this and shoved it six times, and that's all that's going to go. Nothing wants to break down. And most of that, I would say, is circuit dies. There's bound to be some small bits of IC, but not IC, sorry, BGA. But there's not much I can do about that. I think it's because when, when this is in the container, even though there's one blade down the bottom, there's, the other one's fairly high. I was shaking the container and tipping them side to side and trying to get it to blend. That's the best I can do. I didn't get anything to sieve through that time after blending it, so that's uh, that's about it. But I'm going to put everything together anyway. The acid's going to treat the whole lot because there could be gold in this stuff. Um, I don't know. I just don't want to throw anything away. I'd rather treat everything. The whole purpose of blending it is just to break it all down as much as possible so uh, the acid can get to everything. So, acid time now. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is wash away any of the light ash that I don't need. Uh, I'm not going to go into full detail with it because there's a rather lengthy demonstration on the a video that's got 7 kilos of ICs. Basically, I'm just going to squirt water in there, give it a couple of seconds for anything heavy to settle, then pour into this one. So that if anything does get across, I'll, I'll, I won't lose it. Then fill this up again, let it settle for a second, pour the ash off into there, and keep doing that until there's no more ash. Okay, so I've got a clean beaker, and I'm going to tip this into it. And then I'm going to rinse out that water with some distilled water, because if there's silver in there, I don't want the tap water to make the silver fall into silver chloride. I'll need to answer this, so I'll transfer that into there and then rinse it out with distilled water. Okay, so I've managed to get it in there. I've rinsed it four times with distilled water and now I'm going to put some nitric acid in there to dissolve any copper that still may be in there, although I don't think there would be, and any silver that might be in there. So I'm just going to add some nitric acid so dilute nitric acid is what we're looking for here and I'm going to put it on some heat just on low or medium and number one will do and let that heat up for a little while and dissolve anything that's in there all that should be left behind is the gold but you can probably just see there's some fumes in there I put the white background behind it it's kind of you look at that it's clear and then you can see the red so something is going in the solution whether it's silver or copper or whatever I don't know it won't be gold though um, I'm gonna go out for a few hours so I'm gonna just put this down to simmer and just leave it to do its thing I might put a little bit more distilled water in there so it doesn't boil dry and uh, and come back and it should hopefully have dissolved everything that's in there. Okay, I did a small test for silver in solution and that's a positive, but um, I'll just show you what I did. Um, get my turkey baster here, draw up some of the solution, put it into a beaker. and then put some hydrochloric acid in there and it will go milky so 
See, it's going cloudy. If there was no silver in solution, that would just be like green C3 liquid, like it was blue C3. But you can see with this one, it's starting to go white as the silver chloride forms. So what I do now, there'll still be some free nitric acid in there. And I've got the silver thing, the silver pile here. I'll show you. So in here, I've got pieces of silver-plated copper. I've already had these in nitric before. And the best thing about this is that copper is what's needed to drop the silver out of solution. So when I put free nitric acid in here, it will dissolve the remaining silver as well as some copper. And then once there's no more free nitric, the copper will keep going into the solution to drop the silver out. So eventually, when I've put enough free nitric in here, all that will dissolve and the copper will make all the silver fall out of solution. Now I've already got quite a bit of it in this yellow bin. So I'm going to pour my free nitric acid out of that solution into here. I'll filter it and put all the liquid in here. Okay, I've got the solution draining uh, and I've also just started a new batch. So what I did was I rinsed out the sediment with fresh water, uh, fresh um, distilled water to get all the remaining silver solution out of it. And then I just topped it up with some more distilled water and some new nitric to see if I can get the last of any base metals out of the solution, out of the, out of the uh, sediment. Okay, so I've drained all the solution out of the uh, beaker and I've just put some hydrochloric acid in, just enough to cover everything. And now I'm going to put some, just with half a pipette, some, a few drops of, uh, well, about half a pipette full of nitric acid. I will need more, but I'm going to add more later. Uh, I know I say this in every video and I'm going to keep saying it because it's important. You can't put too much nitric, otherwise if you do, you'll never be able to drop the gold. So put small doses at a time. Now I know that there's going to be enough gold in there for half a pipette, otherwise I would have just done a few drops. Um, so I'll put some more in as I need it. Okay, so on two occasions now, it's uh, sl slowed down the reaction. It's only boiling because I've got it on heat. It's not actually bubbling as a result of a reaction. So I'm going to get a pipette, just a, a little sample of it. And we'll do a test. That's all we need, just a dot. And I'll get my test solution. See if we've got any gold in solution. We should have, obviously, but oh look at that. Straight away. Beautiful. So I'm gonna add a little bit more nitric. And uh, what I'll do is I just keep doing that until I when I put nitric in, I should start seeing fumes appear. That tells me that it's still working. And when I put nitric in and nothing happens, there's no fumes, then I know to stop. So I'll put some in now off camera, I'll eat your hands. Okay, I'll just turn the heat off because I uh, haven't seen any more reaction. I put like probably not even a mil of nitric, not, not even that, like just a couple of drops really. And there was no more reaction, but I'm going to let it cool down and then filter it. I'll keep the sludge and I'll do one more extraction just to make sure I've got everything. Okay, so what I've done is I've poured the solution off into another beaker. There's the sediment, there's still some solution in there. Some fine particles have gone across to there, which is why it looks so dirty. Now, two things. What I'm going to do is add a bit of sulfamic acid to this one. Even though I know that by doing incremental additions of uh, nitric that I shouldn't be over, the best thing about it is if you do go over, you only go over by a tiny bit. 
and I put some in and realized there was no more reaction. That's how you do it. So there might be just a little bit in there. So I'm going to put just a little bit of sulfamic in and I'm going to put that on heat. That's that one sorted. So I'll put that on about medium. Now this one I'm going to do a second addition, second extraction to make sure I've got all the, the gold. So I'll put just a little bit. I don't need to do much this time. And I'm going to put just a touch. That's it. Way too much even, but that'll be alright. Just to make sure I've got all the gold and whatever out of it. And I'll put that on heat as well. About the same, about medium. I know the beak is dirty, but you saw it was clean when I started. That's how they go. I get dirty beakers all the time, and then I clean them, and it doesn't take long to get dirty again. So I'm going to let those sit now for a while. I'll put the lid on uh, this one so I can see if any fumes come up in there. And I'll know if I'm still getting any gold. I'll let it sit for a while and then just strain it all off, filter it. Okay, uh, there was no reaction, so I did a Stannis test and it came up positive. I put some more nitric in and you can see the fumes again, so it's still getting gold. Okay, so this solution has been on heat now for oh, anywhere between half an hour and an hour with the uh, sulfamic acid. I would safely say that's well denoxed. I'm going to let it cool down now and turn it off. When it cools down, I'll filter it, get all the fine sediment out. And this one here, as you can see, there's no reaction. So it's time to add a little bit more nutric. I'll do that now and see what happens. And look at that, more reaction straight away. I had to do it off camera because I needed two hands. And uh, so there you go. I'll just keep doing that until there's no more reaction. Why it stopped reacting before I separated the two mixes, I don't know. Maybe I didn't put enough because I did say I only put a tiny bit, a few drops. Um, this time I put half a pipette. And if there was no more reaction, half a pipette is easier to denox with the sulfamic acid. So I'll just keep going with this. Okay, I got a clean beaker. Just washed it nice and clean. It's important because I'll be dropping the gold in this one. And you need a clean beaker to, so you don't introduce any contaminants when you want to get a purity of gold. Got a filter on top. I'm going to drain the solution into it now. Have a look at the beautiful colour of that uh, Aquarigia. Gorgeous. Nice and see through. And the solution's coming along nicely. Four times now I've put more uh, more nitric in there. Plenty of fumes. Almost due for some more soon. But that's coming along gorgeous. That's going to be a nice drop. If the gold that's in there was also in here, it would be even more concentrated. And the more concentrated aqua rigia is, the darker it gets. So it'll be like a real bright orange or even a deep red in some cases. So the fact that it's not a light yellow says that there's a fair bit of gold in there. Um, it means one of two things. Either there's plenty of gold or high purity, or it could even be both. My guess is it's just saying there's a fair bit of gold. And I, I won't drop this until that's completely finished and there's no more reaction. And I'll also filter that into here. And I might even do a third extraction just to make sure that I've got every bit of gold. And then I'll finally get to drop the gold once all that's been filtered into here for the last time and there's no more reaction. And we'll drop all the gold in one hit. That's looking lovely. The reaction now has stopped. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour that solution into here as well. 
I'll have to make a new funnel because this one's all gummed up with residue. And just for the sake of it, I'm going to add one more fresh batch of aqua regia to that to see if I can get any more out. If I can't, if I've got all the gold, that aqua regia won't go to waste because I've just started doing some normal BGAs and I can save the aqua regia for that. I just want to make sure I've got every single bit of gold. If you're in the same position as me and you don't have anything else that you like that, that you can use the aqua regia on, you can store it. If you've made it up and you don't need it, you can store it. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll put a new filter in here and pour that into the stuff here. So one nice solution. Look at that. Look how good that looks. Beautiful. Almost ready to drop the gold. Okay, so they've both been filtered. Lovely and clear. Um, the reason it's in two now is so they've got room to put the SMB because um, it can sometimes like overflow. So, because it was up to about here. So I've poured some into there and I'll put SMB in both of them. I'll get that sorted now, off camera, I just need two hands for it. So for those who want to know how much I'm using, I've got a scoop here which I don't know how many how many spoons we have here. And uh, I'll put two of those scoops into here, I'll put some water in and that'll do for one beaker, then I'll make the same amount for the other one. And then I'll test it to see if I need more. Okay, so I'll pour one in. Do it slowly in case it looks like overflowing. Once you see what the reaction is like, then I can go a bit quicker. When I start seeing white foam on top, that usually means there's enough. I'm starting to get the white foam now. That's good. That's perfect. So now I'll make up some more into the other one. Let's go a little bit in here. I'll just put this last bit in. All right, so I'll just put some more in the other one. So you can see that it's already started the color change just in a minute or two that it took to make some more up. There's the white foam. A little bit more just to make sure. There's plenty. See it's starting to change colour already. There it goes. It's going to be nice. So if you don't let them sit for however long it takes, it could be just an hour or two, it might be overnight. Should be lots of gold powder at the bottom. Be nice. It's just gonna get darker and darker now. It's been a couple of hours now. Starting to clear up a little bit and you see a nice layer of gold down the bottom there. It's looking pretty good. And this one as well. It's time for a spot test quiz. And I expect those of you at the back of the class messing around won't know. Well, what do you do with the wash water? Anyone know? That's right. We pour it into our wash bottle. And I'll show you why. This is our chance to sit. Look at that. Gold. And it didn't look like there was any at the time. The water was nice and clear. Always keep your wash water. So pour this off into a wash bottle. When you wash the gold, put it into a wash bottle. Keep the gold. And I've got the sediment on for a third extraction. Though I don't think I'll get anything from it. So I'll most likely end the video when I do this gold. When I get it all dried and weighed. And if I get anything from that, 
There's no fumes or anything yet. If I do get anything from that, I'll put it in with these BGOs. So, not long now. Well, it's the next day, and the solutions have cleared up. Even though it's uh, got a brown colour to it, you can see the gold down the bottom. Nice. I have tested both of these, and they're zero no black stain so i'm going to decant the solution get down to the gold and then do the wash procedure i won't show it i've seen it showed it on plenty of other videos but if you haven't seen my other videos it's three hot water washes boiling hydrochloric acid and three more hot water washes okay the gold is all dry ready to weigh up this speaker here has the final um, extraction and any filters that were uh, to do with the BGAs, the gold corner BGAs. I've put all the filters in there and everything to try and get the last bit of gold. I just did a test on it and it's a slight purple as you can see. So there's gold in there, not very much considering this is what a good test looks like. So I'm going to just put that in with the, the RAM BJs that I'm doing. I'm not going to worry about it for now. But just take that into account when we're talking about the gold quantity at the end. All right, so there's still some gold there. Okay, final way in and end of video. Uh, apart from that bit of gold that I just showed you was still left in the solution. So here's an empty container. Tear. In the zero. Now keep in mind... The best case scenario for a kilo of green gold corner BGAs is 10 grams. That's best case scenario. I didn't quite have half a kilo. So best case scenario for me would be just short of 5 grams. Now with the gold that's still out in solution and the gold powder now, there's 4.1 grams here and what's in the solution outside. So that's pretty good. I would say that I'm on par with just under five grams and just under half a kilo of gold, gold corner BGS to start with. So that's spot on. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learnt something. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next video. Class dismissed.